Hello and welcome to Gladys Cake Kitchen. In today's video, I am going to be showing you how to make this luscious and delicate lemon cake that I'm feeling right here. But as an added bonus, I'll be showing you the simple DIY trick I used to turn my lemon sponge from this cake to that using baking strips. Baking strips come highly recommended if you'd like a light textured flat topped cake without a dome but they are an additional cost in time and money whether you're buying or making them yourself. So in this video I tried a DIY method of baking strips and will be giving you my honest opinion on the outcome of the bake, cost in time value and texture of the crust and crumb. You'll find out in the end whether they're worth the money or whether there are other alternatives. I am excited to share this video with you so without wasting any more of your time let's get baking. To start with, in a stand mixer, combine sugar, margarine and vanilla and set to cream until the mixture is light and fluffy. I am using stalk margarine here. The complete ingredient list with detailed notes and resources is left in the description box below. So please do check that out. After 5-7 to seven minutes of creaming and observing a change in the texture and color of the creamed mixture, Add in the egg slowly, allowing time for it to mix in properly. Stir in between mixes, but don't be alarmed if the mixture looks broken or curdled. It will all come together. Eggs sorted. Time to add in the flour in batches, alternating with the buttermilk and lemon juice. It may be a good time to add the lemon zest as well. Flour and liquids added. Stop the mixture and finish the mixing by hand to avoid over mixing. All done, it's time to dish the butter into baking tins. Here I am using the PME 7 inch tins baking at 4 inch deep. I line the tins with grease proof paper for extra heights during rise in the oven. One tin is wrapped in the DIY baking strip I made and the other isn't. If you'd like to see how I made the baking strips, I recommend a video by Preppy Kitchen which is linked below. It has detailed instructions to follow on how to complete a DIY baking strip. The other tin is left without a strip for comparison. I'll set this to bake in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius in my convection fan oven for an hour and 35 minutes and I'll be back to give you the results of the bake. Oh well, after an hour and 25 minutes of baking, the cakes are done and here's the moment of truth. The baking strips are a game changer when you consider the difference in appearance of the two cakes. The cake with the baking strip looks almost like a white cake with a soft and delicate crust. The cake without the strip looks dark brown with burnt patches on the crust. Worth noting that the burn may also be due to the longer bake time that was used to accommodate the tin with the strips. Normally a simple recipe like this will bake for about 55 minutes to an hour without baking strips at 170 degrees Celsius. So perhaps it would have been better to bake the cakes separately. That said, the cakes are both still warm to touch and still delicate. So I'm going to set this in the fridge to cool and I'll be back to give you my final results. Cakes all chill set. The cake with the baking strip still looks delicate with a soft crust whilst a 360 view of the cake without the strip looks burnt with a tough looking crust. Slicing into the cakes, the cake with the strip looks very moist with a very wet crumb. Whilst the cake without the strip was evenly cooked through revealing a tightly textured crumb. Surprisingly, despite looking burnt, it wasn't dry at all. So, what do I think of baking strips? Frankly, I think they are great and suitable for the purpose of achieving a good flat topped bake with a delicate crumb. But in terms of time, I am not so sure about the DIY method. I bake a lot of cakes in batches, so spending time making DIY strips will be too costly for me in time. While I could just purchase pre-made baking strips, the Wilton strips are more suitable for sandwich tins measuring 2 to 3 inches deep. So I would have to double the Wilton strips for each 4 to 5 inch tin, which will eventually be too expensive for the many number of tins I bake with. My verdict? Baking strips are totally worth it. But do remember to make adjustment for bake time and temperature if needed to guarantee better result. Have you used baking strips? 
Do you use them? And what do you think? What's your experience? Leave a comment below and I'll be sure to read that out in my next video or give you a shout out. And today's shout out goes to Antonia Regan, who has left several comments below my videos and has been super supportive. So Antonia, if you're watching, thank you. To see more simple recipes like this, check here and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.